Hello everyone, how are you this beautiful day that the Lord has made? I'm Karen Jane Casey on the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. This is where we find encouragement through our struggles, through the challenges that we face every day. And we learn from our experience, always knowing that we can turn to God about anything, about any problems. And I want you to know that during this 10 to 15 minute episode, I'm not going to be judging you. I'm not going to be lecturing or preaching down at you, but I'm sharing my journey and I'm still on it. We learn together and I encourage you share what you have learned. As we continue this year, we've, we have the word focus, focus, focus on the Lord and our life in Jesus Christ and not on all the distractions of this world. And we have enormous amounts of distractions in this day and time. And it's important to walk in love while we remain focused, always remembering the greatest commandment, which is to love our Creator, the one who has unfailing love towards us, and to love our neighbors, those in need, as we love ourselves in a healthy, balanced way. And Jesus tells us to even love our enemies. We build upon focus in the Lord and our love for others and to look at our at our issues, our problems, things that serve to trip us up along our journey. In the month of March, we covered several of those different issues, such as facing the unknown without fear or dread, using free will, making decisions and being quick to listen and slow to speak. In April, we had a series, Christ Crucified and He Arose. If you haven't heard these podcasts, I encourage you to go back now and to listen or watch them at Karen Jane Casey on YouTube, audio on buzzsprout.com. During the month of May, we are in another series. We can learn from the women in biblical times. So far this month, we've looked at a few things. The awesome decisions uh, that the woman at the well made. When she was confronted with Jesus, not only did she accept Jesus as her Savior and repent from her life, but she witnessed to others, and she let her light shine. The decision of Queen Esther to follow her calling, although it was dangerous, for such a time as this, and at the choices of Martha and Mary, with worship being the better priority over serving the Lord. And last week, we considered the bravery, the courageousness of Judge Deborah and Yael, the tent maker. We also considered the mistake that Barak made as a cautionary tale not to make requirements on the Lord when he commands us to do something. Our episode today is, Can You Overcome Jealousy? (laughs) We use a conflict between two women in the Old Testament. And what was the main conflict for these women? Well, they were both married to the same man at the same time. <laughs> Jacob, for one thing, and, and one was a favorite and one was not. Before we get into the drama that happened with Rachel and Leah, both married to Jacob, I'd like to bring it, us up to date on the characters involved, beginning with Jacob's family. Most of the story can be found in Genesis chapter 29. We all probably readily remember Abraham and Sarah, who God chose to give a son to in their old age, Isaac. Moses had shown great faith when he was willing to sacrifice this one son if God required it. But God stopped him from doing it, taking a lamb instead. Abraham willingly gave Lot, his relative, the best of his land. But God blessed him with land as far as he could see, and with his seed to be multiplied. Then we get to Isaac, Abraham's son. He had, Isaac had two sons, twins, Jacob and Esau. Esau was the oldest, entitled to a great inheritance that is and his father's blessing. But while hungry one day, Esau foolishly sold his birthright to Jacob for soup. Then Jacob, his mother, they together tricked the old and dying Isaac into believing that Jacob was Esau. So Jacob received Abraham's blessings passed down to Isaac that should have gone to Esau. 
Esau was left without the inheritance and without his father's blessing. So he lost out all the way around. Well, plain and simple, Jacob was a liar and a cheat. While Jacob was running from Esau, afraid that Esau would take his life in revenge and expecting that that would be rightfully so, Jacob came along to the home and family of Leban. And right away, Jacob fell in love with Rachel, Leban's beautiful daughter. Leban made Jacob work seven years in order to marry Rachel, which he gladly did because he was so in love with her, the time passed quickly with anticipation of marrying her. But guess what? Leban was also a liar and a cheat. Sometimes things come around, don't they? Leban also had another daughter, older than Rachel, Leah. Leah was very plain, so at the pre-marriage celebration going on, Leban made sure that Jacob was drunk. And when it came time to marry, Leban had switched the daughters, and Leah was the only one under the veil, and Jacob was tricked into marrying her instead of Rachel. Jacob didn't even know about the switch until he had sobered up the next morning. Now he had his wife he didn't love, and he would have to work another seven years to get the woman he did love, Rachel. How do you think that made both of the sisters feel? Leah knew that she wasn't loved. Rachel had to wait seven more years for her beloved while her husband was with her sister. Finally, Rachel and Jacob did get married. Jacob's name was along the way was changed to Israel. But their home was not a happy home. She and Leah were in stark comparisons. Rachel was beautiful and loved, but not having children. While Leah was plain and unloved by Jacob, but she was very fertile. She had many children. Leah quickly had four sons, Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah. Then they each had their handmaidens to bear children for Jacob or Israel. The Lord had mercy on Rachel, and she finally bore a son, J uh, Joseph. As a quick side note, you might recall Joseph as Jacob's favorite son, whom Leah's sons were jealous of. Next month, I'll be talking about the biblical men that we can learn from, and likely Joseph will be one of them. So I'm not going to talk much about him there. Anyway, back to Rachel and Leah. Rachel did not have much to enjoy in her life because her son before they had to move. They had to move shortly after she gave birth. Anger and hostility was building among the men. Lebanon and his sons had become irritated with Jacob because Jacob was doing really well. Jacob had become wealthy over the years, and because of the hatred brewing among the families there, Jacob and his family had to move somewhere else. And it's mentioned in Genesis chapter 31 that as they left to go back to the land of Canaan, Rachel stole her father's teraphim and lied about having them. And what is teraphim that Rachel stole? Those were household false gods of the family, idols. Would there be any consequence to fall on her for that? There are remarks made by Rachel and Leah in scriptures, Genesis chapter 31, verse 14 through 15, for us to know that they hated their father, Lebanon. And that's likely because of how he cheated and lied to Jacob, causing them pain, and how he did business generally. Well, anyway, how, why did they hate him? He began the conflict, the anger, the bitterness, and unforgiveness among the sisters and the family. After all, he was a liar and a cheat. He cheated Rachel and Leah through his trickery. He cheated them both. Eventually, Leah had more children by Jacob, and she gave birth to two more sons and two daughters. She had a lot of children by him. What is that, six sons and two daughters? And then her handmaiden had babies. Rachel died while giving birth to her second son, Benjamin. She had named him Benoni, son of my trouble. But after her death, Jacob or Israel, who God had renamed Israel, in turn renamed that son Benjamin, meaning son of my right hand. 
So what happened to this family? From the time Jacob tricked Esau out of his birthright and blessing, trouble followed Israel. Time and time again, he had strife in his family. And he, of course, he was lied and tricked to, tricked just like he had lied and tricked his brother. Hmm. He experienced strife and hatred from his daughters. Rachel stole false gods and lied about it, and then she died during childbirth. What lessons can we glean from all this? Certainly they would include, whatever we sow, we will also reap. If we sow good seed, we can hope for, to reap a harvest. But if we sow evil, we can expect consequences. Deception, lies, cheating, and stealing, all of those evil deeds bring about more of the same. With strife, conflict, anger, and hurt, and jealousy. Hatred and unforgiveness brings destruction to everyone around us. Ultimately, no good thing comes from comparing ourselves with others or to be jealous of another person. Rachel and Leah both had great qualities that they could be happy with, but no, they were always comparing themselves with each other, not feeling good about themselves. It doesn't need to stay that way. We can each have the opportunity to forgive others, to choose not to run with offenses. We each have the free will to decide. Well, there's a great end to this story. God was still able to use these people. Rachel's son, Joseph, a faithful man of God, became the greatest great controller of the grains in the land during famine, making it possible for the people to survive, many people, including his family. The 12 sons of Jacob led the 12 tribes that became the nation of Israel. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, came through that lineage, the tribe of Judah. So what is the enemy meant for harm? God made it for good, for our good. With this story in mind, can you keep yourself free from comparisons, free from envy and strife, and overcome any jealousy that you may have? I ask that of myself as well. Well, you know, there was a time in my life when I was desperately lost, hurting, and afraid. And I suffered many abuses, child abuse, life-threatening domestic violence, and the abuse of um, toxic people. I grieved over the loss of a loved one, and I had major back surgery. Can anyone relate to these trials that I went through? But God worked miracles in my life. He rescued me. He delivered me time and time again, and I never deserved it. When I, when I came to Jesus, everything changed. I'm not alone. I'm never alone. He is always with me. I'm healed. I have joy in my heart instead of the heartbreak and suffering. I don't live in fear. I have an awesome future with the Lord. And these are things that I want for every person. And so I share the good news of Jesus. The most awesome thing that you can do for yourself is to decide to come to Jesus or rededicate your life to Him. God's amazing love for us is demonstrated when He sacrificed His own Son for us. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then Jesus Himself said in John 14.6 I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to, to the Father but by me. You know, there's several places in the Bible where confession is emphasized. It's, we need to confess our sins so He can be faithful and just and forgive us of those sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I encourage you, regardless of where you stand right now in your relationship with the Lord, I encourage you to pray with me and say it out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son, and I believe that Jesus came to earth, suffered on the cross, and died to pay for my sins, and He arose from the grave. He defeated death. But I am a sinner. What can I do? I repent of my sins. I walk away from my sinful life. Please forgive me. I need help, Lord, because I will be tempted. Dear Jesus, I am nothing without you. I ask you to come into my heart 
and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I am so grateful and thankful. I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said this prayer with me, you have begun your relationship with Jesus. And I encourage you to study, read the Word of God. Learn about the character of Jesus so that you can become more and more like Him and learn the promises that God has for you. Always praise, always obey, always be filled with gratitude as you pray and grow in your faith. I encourage you, make Jesus the Anointed One your focus in your life and in your ministry. And His unfailing love, rely upon the Lord and to help you through all of your troubles, all your struggles finding peace and joy despite the chaos around you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, I want to thank you for joining me on this episode of Turn to God with Karen. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, podcaster, domestic violence victim advocate and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen. Every Monday morning we cover lessons for overcoming. Every Wednesday, Sword of the Spirit, we read passages of the Bible. And most Fridays we have Karen's Book Corner where we cover a different topic about the books I've written. Usually I read some. I invite you to share your comments, your suggestions, any feedback is always welcome at my website, KarenJaneCasey.com. That's C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. And when you go there, you'll see books, blogs, podcasts, and even some reference material regarding domestic violence. Well, thank you and God bless.